On our Treasure Coast, frustration building over water releases from Lake Okeechobee, the Lake Worth Lagoon, also being impacted, I should note. It only grew that frustration late last week with word from the Florida Department of Health that harmful blue-green algae had been detected in waterways, several of them in Martin County. Our WPTV news teams are monitoring the very latest on all of that. The man in charge of the district at the Army Corps of Engineers, meanwhile, heard the frustration up close. WPTV's Matt Sesney was there as one congressional lawmaker did not hold back about the impacts of the discharges to our communities. He is the man at the center of the storm regarding Lake O and the St. Lucie River. Colonel Jamie Booth of the Army Corps of Engineers, and he came to catch some heat in Stewart. Also heard a lot of feedback that, that folks are, are feeling like we're not listening. The colonel came to the river's coalition, outspoken opponents of the Lake O water releases into the St. Lucie River. Congressman Brian Mast among them. They are crapping on our community, and they do it in impunity. And, and that's worth being upset about. It is literally an injustice, and injustices are worth being upset about. Mast used colorful language to describe how the releases have turned Stewart's water from Bahama blue to guacamole green. And the river's coalition outlined what's in the 48 billion gallons released since mid-February. 32 metric tons of phosphorus, about 348 metric tons of nitrogen, and over 5,400 metric tons of total suspended solids or silt and sediment. All of this led Colonel Booth to face questions, especially from Congressman Mast. Will you specifically say you are polluting our coastal estuary? It is clear uh, that, that phosphorus, that additional uh, turbidity in the water, uh, potentially if, if those releases are coming with cyanobacteria, uh, that, 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 is, that is poor water quality. And it is having a negative impact on these estuaries. Colonel Booth admits it's a balance he is trying to meet, keeping Lake O at a safe level and managing rainfall and possible flooding to communities around the lake. If at all possible, I want to keep my releases, decisions in the beneficial range, not having impacts to environment. And then really, if I'm really forced to, then I'll make the decision to change that. A little bit of relief for many here as the Army Corps says they plan to start a two-week pause on water releases this weekend from Lake Okeechobee. And next Friday, the Colonel says he plans to announce a new plan on how water is released down the St. Lucie River. In Stewart, Matt Sesney, WPTV, News Channel 5. And now for our roundtable with our longtime News Channel 5 political analyst, Brian Crowley. Brian, thanks for being with us as always. It's the Holy Grail, send more water south, but then you have the competing pressures, concerns around the lake, concerns south of the lake. Stop the discharges east. You and I have heard this debate decade after decade. Why can't we ever move off the dime? Well, it's, it's complicated. Yeah, part, of it, <clears throat> part of it is, you know, in recent years, the Army Corps of Engineers has had to repair the dike. Mm -hmm. You know, we should remember that there never was a dike around the lake. Right. It wasn't until the hurricanes in the 1926 and 1928 where hundreds, if not thousands, were killed that they decided to put an earthen dike around the lake to hold the water in. Well, that created, you know, man-made solutions often create man-made problems, and that's mm -hmm. when we have this huge man-made problem. It helped dry up the Everglades. It helped kill off a huge chunk of the Everglades. And today, when we talk about saving the Everglades, we're talking about saving what's left of the Everglades. Yeah, 40, 50 which is, percent of it. Right. So, uh, so the Army Corps of Engineers still has this huge problem of if their lake, lake level gets too high, does it become a threat to the dike? Does the dike break? And then you have wind up with a major catastrophe. And if they release the water, then it causes the terrible pollution that we see in the lake and the, and the rivers. And uh, it's a tough, tough, tough problem that the, uh, that the Army Corps of Engineers faces. We've covered this for so many years, and you well remember, as do I, the efforts to break bread and sit at the same table, so to speak, between agricultural and big sugar interest is part of that, and environmental concerns. And there's a feeling you get close about the need for land use south of the lake and that it all falls apart. Uh, it would seem to cry for that kind of meeting of the minds, but we never can get everybody to come around to that. Is that <clears throat> fool's gold to think we ever can? Yeah, over the last 30 years, we sometimes get close and we think we've found the solution and everybody's in agreement and then usually it quickly falls apart. Either the sugar industry doesn't agree with it or the environmentalists don't agree with it. Uh, you know, there's never really been a good time for uh, where the uh, sugar industry and the, uh, and the environmentals actually sat down together and tried to come up with a solution. That would be helpful. Uh, you also need a pile of money out of mm -hmm. D.C. And, you know, for, I, Brian Mast is not wrong in his complaints, but he is a member of Congress. So 
help get some legislation passed that gives us the funding and the funding and the means to get this done. And really, uh, in a different kind of way, when we talk about the Palm Beach County transportation issues and regional ones in our other county, it comes down to the political will, the public agreement, the public debate about, okay, if we've got a problem, how do we solve it? But we tend to spin our wheels when I talk about transportation, yeah, and the unintended, industry, and there's sort of a thread to all and, of this. And the ag industry is very correct when they talk about, if you go back 30 years and look at how much uh, development we had west of I-95 or east of I-75, mm. it was very little. Uh, you know, now we're we're building so far west and east from the west coast that uh, the sugar industry is correct in saying you're contributing to the problem with all this development. We are. A lot of major regional debates, whether it's water quality, transportation needs, and how we tackle them and whether we have the capability is really part of the ongoing story of our times. I know you have on your notes uh, always a lot of stuff top of mind. Uh, take it away. Well, you know, uh, a, a few interesting things. Uh, one was that, uh, you know, Donald Trump is suddenly endorsing candidates in races in Florida, uh, in congressional races, and even in state legislative races. Uh, and often they're candidates who did not support uh, him during the presidential race mm -hmm. and may have supported Ron DeSantis. He, he's very clearly giving the feeling that. Uh, his little war with Ron DeSantis uh, is not over yet, and that uh, anything he can do to kind of poke it to the governor, he's going to do, because uh, it for him to get involved in these races seems odd. For, there's no real. He's got his own campaign yeah. to run and a couple of trials coming up, so you would think he'd be busy. Busy. But. Speaking of Governor DeSantis, uh, he's claiming victory this week uh, in a settlement with Disney. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I think. I think it was foolish for him to declare, to declare victory. What they basically did was they shook hands and said, let's just end this. Mm -hmm. You know, Disney didn't really get hurt. Uh, the governor's plan didn't really get hurt. They've kind of reached a neutral uh, agreement on all of this. On the good, management of Disney's Good, property. great. Yeah. You know, Disney's uh, obviously tremendous for Florida's economy. So the governor's office should just move on. What else is on your note sheet there? Well, we have a couple of big things coming up on Monday. Uh, we have uh, the Florida Supreme Court has said that by 4 o'clock Monday afternoon, they're going to announce their decision on two constitutional am amendments, one allowing greater uh, use of cannabis in this state, but the most important one being the abortion decision that they're looking at. There's a constitutional amendment that had overwhelming support from, uh, from people signing uh, petitions for it. Protecting would, uh, their abortion. Protecting, uh, protecting abortion, abortion rights for people, and it's been sort of surprising that the court has taken so long because their job basically is to look at the language and make sure that the language is clear and legal. Um, and they've been taking a really long time, and Monday is sort of their last day in session. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do on Monday. If they both make the ballot, or one or the other, needs 60% voter approval, a higher threshold, of course, for constitutional amendments. And I've asked you before, but I do need to ask you again. If, let's say, they both make the ballot, does it change the contours of the race, if not at the top of ticket, although perhaps they're too down ballot, depending on how it gets people to come out and vote? Because it's a red state now. Well, uh, potentially. I mean, I know Democrats are hoping that this will, you know, move a lot of people who are opposed to uh, the Dodd decision and supported Roe v. Wade to uh, come in here and, and change these things. I think there is a fear that if this doesn't get approval, that the legislature may go ahead and roll back abortion restrictions even more. Um, we could go back as far as, I think it's six weeks that they were talking about limiting uh, uh, abortion to. That law's already there, it just hasn't activated yet. Um, so I, I think there could be some, you know, outrage about this if the Supreme Court doesn't let it, let it on the ballot. Uh, if it gets on the ballot, I presume that Democrats and pro-choice people will do the best they can to get the voters out for the sole purpose of passing that ballot. And we'll see, we'll have to go to the break, but the marijuana debate, already some states that have approved it, you're having a fierce law and order and reconsideration of the limits of recreational marijuana use, so that's gonna be interesting too. We'll have your closing thoughts in just a moment. Back with you in just a moment.